What we do here is go back, 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 back. back. Hello and welcome back to another video of Designing with Ms. Co where I share my thoughts on design, freelancing and entrepreneurship. So last week I reached out to my Twitter following with a poll and asked what would you guys like to see me talk about. So in the tweet I said I've got a couple of ideas for my next YouTube video, let me know what you'd like to see me talk about, your vote count. And the results came to better portfolios at 48%, nailing design interviews at 22%, more tutorials and tips at 27%, and other was 3% and there was a total of 159 votes. But what was hilarious was when I went through the replies, someone said shirtless please. I think that Microsoft video really made its rounds. But you know what? Maybe I should. Jokes. So I guess with those results, we'll be talking about better portfolios. So honestly, I think far too many design portfolios look the same. I think we're all trying to achieve this clean and minimal design that we really forget to bring through some character, some personality, and most importantly, we forget to tell our story. We're trying to remove as much copy as we can from the designs just so it's clean and nice. But in the end, that's what clients really look for. Clients want to know your story. They want to know your process. What are your achievements? What have you worked on? Not just your designs, they also want to know how you think. So I think that's where a lot of designers go wrong. They're focusing too much on the aesthetic and not enough on the actual storytelling, the juicy stuff that clients actually give a <laughs> Because I'm sure you've also heard about cultural fit, have you worked in teams before, how do you deal with feedback. All these interpersonal skills are just as important as the designs you do. Because I'm sure if you went on Dribbble and you did a quick search for UI designers, you were going to find thousands of designers who can design extremely and beautiful interfaces but what makes you different and what makes you horrible are your interpersonal skills, who you are as a person, your experiences and pretty much your story and that is why it is so important to have that story on your portfolio and that is why you need to bring through more character and more personality through your portfolio and not just settle with a clean minimal design. So with that said, hopefully the following points are going to make sense and hopefully you understand where I'm coming from as a designer on how to build better portfolio designs. So number one, hopefully this is obvious enough now, is to tell your story. So how did you start? Who have you worked for? What are your achievements? What drives you? I think you need to tell a lot more about yourself on your portfolio, whether it's on the home page or on an about page, you need to share more. Just keep sharing because as a client or a potential employer, I want to know a little bit more about you as a person. As you know, the interpersonal skills, your character and the type of person you are is very, very critical to whether or not you are horrible or not. So try to avoid in making your portfolio simply just a showcase of designs. Remember to bring that story forward because it's so important for you to sell yourself and to really show why you are different, why you are horrible. So number two is to highlight your strengths. So you shared your story, you've told them about your achievements, what drives you, what you're most passionate about, but what do you specialize in? So for me, is UX design and I just focus on UX design because I want my name to pop up whenever someone thinks of a UX designer. When you dilute your skill set and you say, yeah, I'm okay and good at everything, you're not really going to stand out. And for you to really stand out, you really need to be known for that one special thing. And that's what makes a good brand. So for Nike, it's sportswear. For Apple, it's the iPhone. So what you want to do is really highlight that strength of yours and make that your own. Number three, so you've shared your story, you've highlighted your strengths. Now, what is your process? Because as a client, I'm hiring you as a professional. I want you to drive the project to help me bring my idea to life. So you need to share your process to make sure the client is confident when he hires you. They want to know that they can be rest assured that they're not going to be pulling their hairs out when they hire you for a project. So it's always great to have a section on your portfolio on what is your personal take on taking an idea or a design brief all the way to execution. This helps the client have better expectations on what to expect and they will also have more trust and confidence in how you will bring their ideas to life. Number four is to show your work. And what you want to avoid is just to have static images of the end result. What you really want to do is you want to have a case study. So you outline 
how you took a design brief into creating user stories, how you took user stories into the wireframing stage, like your information architecture, how did you think about laying out the interface, how you took the wireframes into the design phase. So really this gives the potential client more trust and confidence that you can help manage the entire process and really bring their ideas to life. Because I'm sure a lot of clients have been burnt before with absolute messy processes and chaotic experiences with previous freelancers. What you want to avoid is being one of those freelancers. You want to prove to the client that you can really help manage the process and that they can be rest assured that they're going to get what they set out to get in the first place. And of course, your case study is the perfect chance for you to outline and share all the design thinking that goes behind a design piece and project that you take on. Clients will definitely value a designer who has better design thinking over another designer who has just great interface design skills. Number five is to validate everything you have on your portfolio. So you have testimonials, be sure to have like a photo of the person, have their name, also a link to the LinkedIn. If you're going to brand dump, so have logos of all your past clients, be sure to either have a testimonial or a case study for every single logo. The reason being is that Far too many people work for Airbnb, far too many designers work for Microsoft, Google, and all these big brands. Clients really want validation to really show that this stuff is legitimate. So be sure to validate everything you have on your portfolio. So just remember, in the end, your portfolio is much more than just a static template. It needs to be different, you need to bring more character, more personality, and you need to share your story because you are trying to convince a client on why you are more hireable than another designer. And it's much more than just the designs that you do, it's also your interpersonal skills, which comes through the story that you tell about yourself. So hopefully that helps, and I will see you in the video. Oh, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and also subscribe. I think the box is over here, or here, I don't know. But Oh, just before I go, the sun is like setting and it's coming right through my window and I feel like I'm glowing. Anyways, I won't hold you up any longer. I will see you in another video very soon. Toodle.